Okay, this tutorial is on beveling. Um, what I have open right now is the uh, the bevel options, bevel and emboss options of Photoshop, as well as Painter. Uh, the Painter being on the right, the uh, Photoshop being on the left. Um, right away, you can kind of notice that the uh, the preview is uh, a lot bigger, um, and it's a little more basic in uh, Painter. I find it a little bit easier to to understand. Uh, versus the small preview that they have in uh, in Photoshop. And just in general, I find it a little more uh, intuitive, um, just in terms of uh, really kind of figuring out what you're doing to the image. Um, but you can do you can do it in Photoshop or you can do it in Painter. I just find it a little bit easier to understand. And I also think Painter does a little bit of a better job of translating uh, texture and brush strokes into a you know, three-dimensional bevel world. For example, we have two images here, um, both of these images created in Painter, and then uh, one taken into uh, Photoshop and one left in Painter. These are just various various brush strokes that I took into, uh, in this case, the Painter um, emboss mode, and just to show you how it kind of captured the uh, three-dimensional aspects of the, the paint. And then one I took into Photoshop, the one on the right here. Um, which, you know, I don't think did and nearly as good of a job of really capturing the three-dimensional aspect of the, uh, the brushes that I was working with. And some of that may very well have to do with uh, the fact that I created these brush strokes with, with Painter. So it does a little bit of a better job of understanding the, uh, the makeup of the actual brush strokes themselves. To begin with, I'm just going to start off with a very simple shape because I think it'll be easier for you to understand all the options that you have with Bevel. Um, you find the bevel option in the layers menu. In the very bottom, there's this little thing that looks like a little thing that you would plug into an outlet. It's called dynamic plugins. Um, go ahead and click that and it'll bring up a list of basically special effects that are available in Painter. And these are special effects that are big enough to the point where they actually require a whole new you know, window to open up. Um, what we want is bevel world and it's on the very top. So you can go ahead and click that and it'll open up your little bevel world window. And what we have here is we have uh, two different type previews. Um, we have one where it shows basically the, the, the side view of it. So if you can imagine the shape that we're looking at right now, um, this is the, uh, the basically the, uh, the silhouette angle of it, uh, the side angle of it. And so this is this little portion right here, this little slope is the, the slope that you're seeing around our object and the very top right here is representing the uh, the top of the object you know it's almost like we're looking at this totally from bird's eye view from uh, from up above on your actual you know painting that you're working on and then the preview here you're looking at it at a uh, side profile angle and then uh, this right here is just how you can actually control the uh, the lighting so we're just going to start off with the controls for the bevel uh, you can control the uh, the width of the bevel so you can have a very, uh, you know, very narrow little strip there and a whole lot of flat surface on the very top. Or you can have a whole lot of bevel and a very little flat surface. So you can almost imagine this is kind of like a mountain that you're kind of creating. And this will control, you know, how flat the top of the mountain is going to be and how much of the slope you're actually going to be able to see. And then we also have the outside portion. You can basically kind of create a, uh, a whole another layer around it and you can have that layer be another color if you want to. If you want to change the color, you can go ahead and click on outside color. And I'll pick maybe like a little blue color. Uh, click on that and it'll change the outside color. Now you can see right now I have two different colors going. That's because the outside portion that I'm showing is very, very little here. You can see it's kind of stopping halfway through the actual slope of the bevel. So if you wanted that to be a little bit more apparent, you'd want to go ahead and continue that all the way to at least the point where you get it uh, kind of over that little hump there where it starts to actually get to the flat part. And I'm going to go ahead and take this all the way down because I prefer not to have any uh, outside color. And then you can control the other uh, rim slope basically how it kind of slopes up there. You can control the, uh, the cliff portion. And you can see a lot of the choices that you have that are using you know, terminology when, you know, as if they're almost like referring to a mountain to begin with. So it's really helpful for me to kind of think about this as like a mountain or a hill that you're kind of forming. 
and you can control the uh, the cliff slope. You can control the uh, the base slope. You can control the smoothing. So if you want to smooth it out a whole bunch, you know, just take that up, uh, you know, as high as you want to smooth it out. So it can look kind of like an airbrushed piece like this. Or if you didn't want it to be smooth at all, and you wanted those all all those little sharp edges there, you know, just go ahead and take smoothing all the way down. In this case, it's just uh, seven percent. And then you have the lighting control, which is pretty similar to some of the other lighting controls that we've seen in terms of like applying texture and whatnot. You can just take your little light source here and direct it, you know, wherever you'd want the lighting to be. Or you can go over here to light direction and kind of you know, play around with that that way in terms of uh, controlling the, the direction of the light. Uh, you can also control the uh, the light height, whether you want it to be you know, very close up to the object or whether you'd want it to be you know, very far away. So it's kind of uh, you know, lighting up the whole thing. You can control the brightness of it. You can control the uh, the scatter of it, just in terms of like uh, how it's like radiating throughout the object, and you can control the shine of it. And you can also control the reflection to make it look like, you know, something like a glass or marble or something that had some kind of reflective property to it. I'm going to put that all the way down and I'm going to go ahead and change the lighting to the kind of extreme left here because I want to show you how you can actually change the color of light, just like with the texture control lighting special effects. You can uh, click on a light color and let's say if we want to give it kind of like a purplish color, I can go ahead and select that, click OK. And then we have kind of like a purplish kind of glow to it. Now you can really take advantage of the uh, the bevel option with text, um, which is something that's really used quite a bit with um, when it comes to Photoshop. It seems like a bevel bevel and emboss is used um, a lot when it comes to text to make it look uh, three dimensional and whatnot. And you can do the same thing with Painter. Um, how you get to the text option is on the very uh, left-hand corner here, just the uh, little text icon there, the letter T. Just go ahead and click on that, and then you'll see this all changes up here. And then it'll open up basically a whole another layer that you're gonna be working with. So let's go ahead and I'll start off another little text box here. And you have uh, very little options to begin with in terms of the different kind of brushes you're gonna work with. Um, just like, you know, five or six, but you can also just press the, uh, the other fonts and it'll open up uh, another little window and you have all these other little fonts that you can choose from. So I'll just go ahead and pick, uh, I'm just going to pick a copper plate Gothic. Click on that and click on OK. And I'm going to write the end. It looks like it's a little bit too big for what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on uh, right next to the, uh, the T here. Um, you can either you can either type in the size you want, or you can just use this little kind of sliding icon here. And then we can apply the emboss to, uh, to these. Now you do need to go, to go one by one unless you like flatten all these out. So I'll just go ahead and apply them one by one. And that's the end. Those are the basics of Bevel World.